a real IRA leader who plotted an explosion during the state visit of Britain's Prince Charles two years ago, has been found guilty by the Special Criminal Court of directing the activities of a terrorist organization. Seamus McGrain, who was also convicted of IRA membership, is only the second person to be convicted of directing terrorism in the state. His ally Michael McEvitt was jailed for 20 years in 2003 for directing terrorism. The court found today that Seamus McGrain 63 discussed an operation involving explosives in the run-up to the state visits of Prince Charles two years ago. McGrain, of Little Road, Dramaskin, Colouth was convicted of directing the activities of an unlawful organization, styling itself the Irish Republican Army, otherwise Oglai na Iran, otherwise the IRA, between the dates of April 19 and May 13, 2015. He was also convicted of membership of the IRA between January 18, 2010 and May 13, 2015. He had denied both charges. Convicting McGrain, Ms. Justice Isabel Kennedy, presiding at the non-jury court, said that there was the clearest evidence of directing an illegal organization. She said that there was evidence from two audio recordings, from April and May 2015, of McGrain and Donalo Coestilba in conversation in the snug of the Coachman's Inn on the airport road a pub that had been bugged by guarded detectives. McGrain had issued instructions to Mr. Okoasdilba regarding meeting other people and had made statements about providing bomb-making material for others. McGrain mentioned experimenting with the development of explosives and discussed strategy and his involvement in training people in the IRA and swearing in people to the organization. The judge said the recording also referred to a military operation of significance and the main attack on May 19, the date that Prince Charles was due to carry out a state visit. McGrain had also referred in the recordings to an attack on Palace Barracks the MI5 headquarters in Northern Ireland on April 12, 2010 and to a bomb on a railway line. She added that Gardai had discovered a veritable arsenal of weapons and explosive substances in hides on land adjoining McGrain House, which included ammunition, a revolver, mortar parts and bomb-making components. Ms. Justice Isabel Kennedy, presiding, sitting with Judge Sinead Nietzsche-Lachain and Judge Cormac Dunn, remanded Mr. McGrain in custody for sentencing on November 14 next. How Gardy bugged popular Dublin pub to catch real IRAs Seamus McGrain Real IRA leader Seamus McGrain was bugged by Gardy as he plotted in a well-known Dublin pub with another man to carry out an operation involving explosives during the run-up to the state visit of Prince Charles two years ago. The Garda National Surveillance Unit planted a sophisticated listening device in the snug of the Coachman's Inn on the airport road, which recorded conversations between McGrain a founder of the Real IRA and engineering graduate Donna Loco Estilba. During McGrain's trial at the Special Criminal Court, during which there was no cross-examination of prosecution witnesses, the court heard recordings of the conversations between McGrain and Oco Estilba in April, 2015. McGrain told Oco Estilba go with whatever plan you wish. I think he's coming on the 19th a reference to Prince Charles. I don't like an embarrassment. McGrain then mentioned military significance, symbolic, Akasadilba replied. Symbolic is right, replied McGrain. The two men were heard in the recording of April 19th discussing a location around 400 meters from the target. Detective Sergeant Padraig Boy said that the location being discussed was approximately 400 meters from the Cross of Sacrifice, a monument in Glasnevin Cemetery commemorating British and Irish soldiers who fought in World War I, the two men were also recorded discussing a bomb found on a train line in Northern Ireland in February 2015 and an attack on MI5 headquarters in London in April 2010. The court also heard that Gardy found bomb-making components in a field adjacent to McGrain's house. Veteran Republican McGrain joined his former colleague in the Provisional IRA, Michael McCovitt, at the formation of the Real IRA at a meeting in a remote farmhouse near Old Castle in Comey the November, 1997. The two had resigned from the Provisional IRA, where McCovitt was quartermaster general, when the terrorist organization decided earlier that year to begin decommissioning of their arsenal. At the formation meeting of the Real IRA, McGrain was appointed director of training for the new dissident organization. McGrain had been convicted of IRA membership in 1976 but had not been imprisoned since then. A former member of the Provisional IRA executive, McGrain personally oversaw the training of new volunteers in the real IRA. It was during one such training session that he was arrested when the emergency response unit surprised a group of 10 men and boys at a remote farm near Stamullen in Comey in October, 1999. The group who include Alan Ryan, the real IRA leader who was shot dead in Dublin in 2012, were weapons training in a disused underground cellar. Gardy discovered an assault rifle, a submachine gun, a pistol and a rocket launcher and ammunition in the cellar. McGrain was jailed for four years by the Special Criminal Court in 2001 after he pleaded guilty to training others in the use of firearms. 
Donal Ocoesvilba was a significant recruit for the dissident Republican terrorist group known as the Real IRA. Although he never came to the attention of the Guardi, his father's background as a former leading provisional IRA figure, combined with his technical skill and clean record, made him a natural for recruitment by the dissident Republican groups who posed the biggest threat to security, north and south of the border. Security sources stressed that he was not radicalized by any outside influence but was easily influenced by older militant Republicans because of his natural sympathy for physical force republicanism. His father, James Monaghan, was one of the so-called Columbia Three who was arrested in Columbia in 2001, convicted of training fought guerrillas in bomb-making and who fled to Ireland in 2004. Monaghan escaped from the Special Criminal Court following a bomb explosion there in 1976 and was alleged to be the head of engineering of the Provisional IRA, where he gained the nickname Mortar Monaghan. Okoas Thielba never came to the attention of the Guardi who regularly monitor new faces in the ranks of the dissidents, but he was soon active in radical causes. He also took part in the riots in Dublin's O'Connell Street, which followed the planned Love Ulster Parade in the city in 2006 and he was drawn into the company of dissident Republicans and in particular McGrain, who cultivated him because of his technical expertise as a trained engineer. One security source said of Okoas Dilba he was never on the radar of the Guardi, but he was a big find for the dissidents because he had the sort of technical knowledge they craved to make explosive devices. Since his jailing last year, Okoas Dilba has been on the landing in Port Lawas prison reserved for the so-called New IRA. This grouping, which is regarded by security forces north and south as the most dangerous threat to security in Ireland, is made up for former provisional. IRA members in the North, members of the real IRA and other dissidents who never accepted the mainstream provisional IRA strategy. Members of the so-called new IRA were believed to have been behind several bomb and gun attacks and to have murdered prison office David Black in the North in 2012 and the murder of PSNI Constable Ronan Kerr in 2011.